more pressure coming through for the NEC 20. We're down a quarter of a percent. On Friday, we lost six tenths of one percent. What is driving trade today? Uh, well, it's still Safaricom. Uh, we are still seeing quite a bit of. Uh, activity on Safaricom, although the stock still held its ground today. We've also seen a bit uh, of m a bit more activity coming from the industrial and allied sector, which took about 12.5%. And this was more in the companies that announced results last week. That is uh, Mumia, Sugar, and East Africa breweries. On the financial sector, most of the activity was in KCB and Equity Bank, both of which traded uh, at slightly above what they've been trading with the KCB around 18 shillings and 95 cents. Mm. It sounds like the local or the usual suspects when it comes to what's been driving the markets. We saw Safaricom hitting around 4 shillings 70 on Friday. In fact, lo the whole of last week, we saw Safaricom shilling around 3%. We also know that they are planning to unveil that 4G technology uh, in the next two months. Do you think that is going to put them in good stead? Well, I think right now what really matters is the, the, which direction the price war is going to take, what their reaction is going to be. We've had Safaricom say they've sent people to India to see the, to look into the Bharti Air, Airtel um, model so that they can be able to prepare some sort of answers to what's been happening on the local market. Uh, in terms of uh, Zane, which is the second biggest mobile telephone network in Kenya. So uh, I think that's more what in investors are looking at. The 4G, of course, is going to give them an, the upper hand in terms of data, but um, we also know that the others are also bringing in their 3G networks very soon. Mm. Well, do you think this is going to be resulting in some kind of uh, mobile price war? We also know that the Chinese are heavily involved here as well. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a difficult scenario to play out going forward, given the fact that Safaricom has been the market leader. Do you think that is going to change? Well, not necessarily. I mean, in the, in the short term, we are going to see shifts, but not very big shifts. Because one thing you must remember is that uh, with Safaricom and, and the bigger players, you find that they've got other products that investors have come to rely heavily upon, especially the M-Pesa money transfer net, uh, platform, which has become very popular in the country. So I don't think that people will, d will necessarily shift completely from you know one network to the other but rather use those features that they feel are ad an advantage in each of the different networks mm -hmm. meaning that we're going to see more people having mm, different uh, sim cards hopefully when we have the the new um, you, you know portability number portability it's going to ease that pressure on investors mm. uh, looking at new regulations that have hit the alcoholic industry uh, we know that there's a law that legalizes traditional brews and this of course increasing the competition uh, of course quite significantly and apart from that uh, it seems that many bars are going to be closed any bar that is uh, within 300 meters uh, to schools what impact is that going to have on East African breweries we know that this co company has been uh, taking a bit of a knock over the last few trading sessions. In fact, it was down 0.6% on Friday. Well, I've always maintained that Kenyans like their tipple, and uh, they've always been supportive of, of East Africa breweries. Um, as far as uh, the, the traditional brews are concerned, we've seen the same done with Konyagi and Waragi in Uganda and Tanzania. And so the expectations are that the big players will also jump into this. Of course, it, 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 it also opens the door for smaller brewers to come into the market. But um, I don't think they'll have the sort of muscle that they would, would be needed to unsettle the bigger brewers. And I think that uh, for now, what we'd, we'd like to, we, we are really happy about is that we're not going to see so many people dying from yeah. drinking um, alcohol laced with poisonous substances. Mm. Well, that is great news, of course. It has been a problem in Kenya for quite some time. Looking at uh, the likes of Total Kenya, uh, a company that uh, we saw pre-tax profits hitting 775% higher, so much better there. And we've also been seeing quite a big stabilization when it comes to oil products on a global level. So this feeding through into the company as well. Well, um, Total Kenya, I think the issue in Kenya has been, there's, there's been a very long-winded 
a legal issue which has to do with um, facilities at the refinery in, in, in Mombasa, and this has to do a lot with Ken Okobil. And I think uh, as Ken Okobil has issues, then Total Kenya and the other in mm -hmm. industry players are gaining on that. Uh, because Ken Okobil is actually the biggest uh, distributor of petroleum products in the country. And so um, based on what is going to happen on that front and whether they are going to resolve the issues uh, is actually what is going to drive uh, the way forward for all the different um, petroleum and the petroleum product distributors.